night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God is on the move. Things are happening rapidly and quickly. We are hearing of many testimonies of God exposing all the wickedness. Hallelujah. Would you grab your swords, please? And turn to Proverbs 3. Now, the Bible warns us that in the last days, latter days, that many will be taken captive, deceived by doctrines of demons and deceiving and seductive, seducing spirits. And those who would come in the name of Jesus are proclaimed to be Christians. And they would deceive many. You know, when you begin to look at doctrines, and the Bible warns us that the Satan comes as an angel of light. That's why even when in the book of Revelation, when they began to worship the angel, he said, no, don't do this. I'm one of your brethren. Don't do this. You only worship God. So you got all kinds of religions that their doctrines have been brought to them by an angel visiting an individual. Does everybody understand that? That's a false doctrine because Satan comes as a doctrine, an angel of light. So you got Mormons, you got all kinds of Buddha and all the other baloney. You got Islam, Muslims. Everyone's received the information from an angel. Only Jesus Christ, the things that are written were about a man that came to the earth, proclaimed himself to be the Son of God and God, with miracle signs and wonders, and everyone recorded what he did. Does everybody understand it? Because these were eyewitnesses, not somebody in the cave where an angel showed up and said, hey, this is from God. So we're seeing all kinds of false doctrines rise up. Jesus said, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. It's not a specific day. Amen. Every day. The word Sabbath means rest. See, the enemy tries to bring people back into bondage and back under laws and regulations. When that's all the Lord is saying, I want a relationship. I want you to know who I am. And I want you to know who you are. That is the vital, most important thing. Amen. But he says, don't forsake to assemble. Why does he say that? So that we can gain information, because knowledge. So that we can gather together and worship the Lord together, because there's a corporate anointing in that. You know, one of the things the enemy likes to do is, just like the wolf comes to take a sheep out of the flock. Isolation is dangerous. Long distance of time of fellowship is dangerous. Very dangerous. And Proverbs chapter 3, would you read it from verse 1, please? What does he tell us? He says, my son, do not what? Forget my law or my words or my promises, but let your heart keep my what? Commands. Let your heart keep his commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. See, he's speaking a heart. It's different. Because see, when a person listens, it goes to the mind. When a person hears, it goes to the heart. Write them on the tablet of your heart, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. When what? When it's no longer in your mind, because the enemy can take all that, but he can't take what's in your heart. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Verse 5, trust in the Lord with all of your what? Your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. You know, the word understanding, wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. So don't lean on everything that you think you need to know how to do. Amen. In all of your ways, acknowledge the Lord and he will direct your paths. 
Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions because you and I don't know nothing. Everything is lent to us. We are stewards of God's possession. Amen. And with the first fruit of your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father the son in whom he delights. So God will chasten us. He will correct us. See, coming out of worldly ways of understanding, that's what he's asking us to do. And in aligning your ways with the ways of the thinking according to the mind of Christ, by hearing his words, not listening. Amen? Hmm. Hearing, remember, hearing is to the heart, listening is to the mind. Understanding means how to do it. From, look, at, there is a, a difference between the eternal view <laughs> and a carnal view. Amen? And now the eternal view, having an eternal view of something, in other words, of how to do something, comes with something very special. It is established with an unconditional submission. Everyone say unconditional submission. To the, uh, to the character of Christ and his words and his spirit. So there's an unconditional submission. See, so many people have conditions with God. They try to. In fact, they say, well, Lord, if you'll do this, then I'll do that. And God says, no, you either do this, and then I'll do that. The Bible tells us that once you've completed the assignment, God releases the promise. So many people are trying to get the promise before they've completed anything. Amen? So in this, God, people are still dealing with, the, God is still dealing with people that are trying to do conditional submission. They believe that their works ought to be a representation of submission. Obedience is submission. Amen? Obedience. He wants to know if you're committed or not. He wants to know the level of your commitment. Hallelujah. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Everybody there? It has nothing to do with age. It has to do with maturity. See, some people have a hard time submitting to someone younger than them. Hello? Even though they're more mature, especially at jobs. Then you get a younger boss, that, you know, with somebody. And they have a hard time submitting. Because they're still carnal. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. Submissive to, in other words, respect one another. Amen. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. In other words, he gives his plan to those who live a life of unconditional submission. See, to be prideful is not, un is not an unconditional submission. To be prideful is rebellion, disobedience. But it says God resists the proud. So some people are wondering why things are not happening, why they can't hear God's voice. Because he ain't talking to them. Why? Because they're prideful. Until they finally humble themselves, then they'll be able to hear but God gives the plan, the grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Casting your cares upon him for he cares for you. Be what? Sober. Sober, which means what? Alert. Be vigilant. Consistent. Be, be alert and be consistent to submission. Amen? 
Because their adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So you ain't the only one going through it. Amen? Submit, respect. Only with humility, humbleness. You can't submit and respect and be obedient as a proud individual, pridefulness. It's impossible. Submit, respect only with humility, humbleness. Stop trying to tell everyone how to do something when you haven't submitted yourself. Hmm. Hallelujah. That is called pride. And God rejects the prideful. Trying to tell somebody else to submit when you can't submit. Amen? Trying to tell somebody else the wrongs when you're a non-submissive. You're still in the place of a conditional submission instead of unconditional. There's a difference. In Romans chapter 10. People says, I'll try it instead of I'll do it. They haven't reached a conditional and unconditional. Amen? Submission. There's still conditions. Where there's conditions, doubt can come in. Oh, hallelujah. Romans 10, verse 1. Unconditional submission. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be what? Saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, seeking to establish their own righteousness, oh, have not what? Submitted to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law. The man who does those things shall live by them. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. In your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess your, with, with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has risen him from the dead, you will be what? Say, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Many seek to establish their own righteousness by their own own understanding not able to submit to the righteousness of God they haven't reached an unconditional submission yet in first Peter chapter 3 and verse 1 it says wise but he I want to speak about this to everyone <laughs> amen Wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the word, they, without a word, may be won by the conduct of their wives. When they observe your chaste conduct, accompanied by reverence or fear of God, do not let your adornment be merely outward, arran arranging in the hair Wearing gold, Mr. T. Tartar starter kit, and putting on fine apparel. Rather, let it be hidden, not the, the hidden person of the, let it be in your heart with the incorruptible beauty of what? Gentleness, gentle, and a quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. For in this manner in former times the holy women who trusted in God also adorned themselves being submissive to their own husbands 
as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters you are if you do and are not afraid with terror. Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be what? Hindered. Finally, all of you, be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers. Be tenderhearted. Be courteous. Not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. Mm. For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from stupidity or evil. Amen? For his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do wicked. Whoa. Okay. God's got a plan here. <laughs> Unconditional submission in the fear of God. Gentle quiet spirit of humility is beauty in the sight of God but pride rebellion arrogance is wickedness in the sight of God amen so there's a place where a person has reached an unconditional submission no matter what there's no conditions amen submission surrender amen but there is a difference between a surrender and submission people can surrender but they're not submitting it sounds strange, doesn't it? I surrender, Lord, but they're not submitting to everything God's asking them to do. They might only surrender to or, or, or submit to partial. So they may think that they're living a life of submission, but they're really not. They're living a life of uncondition. They're living a life of conditional submission, not unconditional submission. In Philippians chapter 2. When a person tells me I'll try, I know they're not, that's not conditional. I mean, it's, it's, that's not a condition that I'm going to accept. <laughs> that means that they're, they're still open doors. They're still not really got to that place. Well, I'll try. Forget to try. Do it. You may try to walk across the street, but you, if a truck's coming, you better do it. Amen not a try see there's always a, an open door or compromise in it Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12 let's speak it therefore my beloved as you have always obeyed now as you have always is obedience a part of uh, unconditional submission you bet your sweet bippy. <laughs> Hello? Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. See, God checks it out. He knows what goes behind closed doors. He knows the attitude and motive of the, every individual one of us. Nothing is hidden. He either sees you as a Con unconditional submitter or one with conditions. Well, it's just not going right for me today. Oh, you poor little flesh creature. It's a good day to die. That's a test from God. Things aren't going right? Hello, welcome to the earth. Things are not going to go right for you all the time. But it's what you do with it. Amen. So what does he say? But now much more obey in my absence work out your own salvation with what fear reverence honor and respect and trembling for it is god who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure do all things without what complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of god without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you're supposed to be shining as lights in the world Holding fast the word of life so that 
I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Ooh. Work out your unconditional submission with fear and reverence and trembling, respect, without complaining and grumbling because you don't understand. People grumble and complain because they don't understand something. People have a tendency that kind of wants to know everything. But God's not asking you to understand everything. He's asking you to trust him in everything. Amen? Again, these are grumbling and complaining and, uh, because you don't understand the issue or the circumstances that's going on. You don't need to. You know God's going to always make a way. Amen? 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Okay, challenges. Amen? Anybody been challenged lately? You don't have to raise your hand. Everybody is. That the what? Genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Genuineness. What's he looking for? He wants to know how genuine you are in your commitment to him and your submission to him and your obedience to his ways. How genuine are you? That's what trials and tribulations bring across our path, don't they? They're testing processes. Look, at you. God's not going to, he knows you, but he wants you to know you. Amen? 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5. It says, but if anyone has caused grief, he has not grieved me, but all of you to some extent. Not to be too severe. This punishment which was inflicted by the majority is sufficient for such a man. So that on the contrary, you, may, you ought rather to forgive and comfort him. Lest perhaps such a one be swallowed up with too much sorrow. Therefore, I urge you to reaffirm your love to him. For to this end, I also wrote that I might put you to the test whether you are obedient in all things. Now, whom you forgive anything, I also forgive. But if indeed I have forgiven anything, I have forgiven that one for your sake in the presence of Christ. Lest Satan should take advantage whoa, of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Many people are still ignorant of his devices. If you're living a life that's a conditional submission, you're not, you're, you're still ignorant of the enemy's uh, devices. Anyone causes problems, he's saying, to you, forgive them. That's called unconditional submission. Forgive them. Amen? Because when you don't do that, you're actually rejecting what God is asking you to do. Forgive them. Uh, the Lord forgave us. Amen? The Bible warns us, if you don't forgive, you're not forgiven. Amen. The problem when people fall into this place is because they cannot recognize the unseen influence of evil. The unseen influence of evil presence taking advantage of individuals. Why? Because these individuals have been taken by pride and self-centeredness. And so they're more concerned about their emotion. And then they react from their emotion because they're living a life of conditional submission. Everything is conditional. I'll submit if this, 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 and this. God is looking for unconditional submissive individuals. It doesn't fall into place. We either submit or we lose out. Amen? Philippians chapter 2, 5.
Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and committing, coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became what? Obedient. So you can't become obedient with pride. It's impossible. And became obedient to the point of death, even to the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the God the Father. Powerful. Anyone, you know, so in this, humble yourself, he says. Become obedient in an unconditional submission. It's an unconditional submission of a state of being. Look at Jesus. He was unconditional submitted to God the Father. There was no conditions involved. Amen? None. We've got to walk away from things that the enemy tries to bring conditions of submission. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. In other words, protect your thoughts. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace or the plan of God that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts or acts as in your ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in your conduct. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. And if you call on the Father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here on earth in fear, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold from your aimless conduct received by the traditions of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for us, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope is in God. Hmm. Protect your thoughts, be alert, trust in the plan of God <laughs> with unconditional submission to it. That's unconditional submission to his plan. Amen? In 1 Samuel 15, verse 22. So Samuel said to Saul, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings as sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than the fat of the rams. For rebellion is the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is iniquity and idolatry. Because you've rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. Now, understand this, that he's saying, look at rebellion. You, you, you're, you, so you, Saul was living a conditional submission not an unconditional. So he wasn't hearing what God was telling him to do. He was told to go out and kill the whole tribe. Children, everything, the animals. And Saul decided to take back the king and the good things and the spoil. And so Samuel the prophet had to go up and rebuke him. And so this is why you're hearing this harsh rebuke to him. Because Saul did not obey. He was living a conditional submission, not an unconditional submission. Then Saul said this. Now, now understand this. So he, he was being influenced. For rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. In other words, that's the voice of the enemy. Those are demonic spirits. That's where rebellion is associated from. And so Saul ha held a position, didn't he, as a king? But God said, I'm going to remove you from that position. And this is where people must be careful. 
Because a conditional submission will never hold a place of position. I'm going to say that again. A person who lives a conditional submission will never hold a place of position in the body of Christ, of authority. God can't trust them. It's got to be unconditional submission, not conditional. You can see here that God rejected Saul from his position, didn't he? Amen? I mean, um, yeah, Saul. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now, therefore, please pardon my sin and return with me, that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said to Saul, ain't happening. But Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. And Samuel turned around to go away, and Saul seized the edge of his robe, and it tore. And Samuel said to him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today, and has given it to a neighbor of yours who is better than you. Ooh. Ouch. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor relent. For he is not a man that he should relent. Well, in other words, he's not going to say, I'll try. He's saying, I'll do. Amen. There's a difference. Hallelujah. So the example here was Saul never, he never reached an unconditional submission. And some people still haven't reached it. And when you can't reach an unconditional place, of, uh, 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 unconditional submission, God, he can't trust you. You'll never reach a place of position. Amen? And I'm going to close at Hebrews 3, verse 7. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today if you will hear his voice, it didn't say listen. Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. In the day of the trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me and tried me and saw my works 40 years, therefore I was angry with that generation and said they always go astray in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Well, that's conditional submission, isn't it? Unconditional submission knows his ways. They have not known my ways. So I swore my wrath. They shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. For who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Now with whom was he angry forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to him did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey. Who did not what? Obey. So we see that they have they could not enter in because of unbelief. Unbelief, rebellion, disobedience is a non submissive life. Amen. Non submission to the ways of Christ. You cannot have a conditional submission with God. It must be unconditional. Amen. That's why the Bible says submit to God to what? Resist the devil. Let's go to James 4 for a minute. In verse 1. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do not that come from your desires for pleasure? Is pleasure an emotion? Yeah. Selfish emotions. They come from the desires for your pleasure that war in your members. 
You lust and do not have. You murder and cover and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you don't ask. And you, when you ask, you do not receive because you do not ask correctly. You ask amiss that you're going to spend it on those lustful members and of your pleasures. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you not think that the Scripture says in vain, the Spirit who dwells in us yearns jealousy, but he gives more grace, therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will what? He will what? He will flee from you. Submit to God. Submit to God. Submit to the ways of Christ. So the devil sees Christ in you. Amen? And flees. If he doesn't see Christ in you, he ain't fleeing. You be fleeing. Hello. <laughs> That's why people get in trouble. You know, the, the world says see Christ in each and every one of us. Not the devil. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word of unconditional submission. And Lord, whatever it is in our lives, expose it, that we may live a life of submission unto your ways, so the world and the demons will see Christ in us and flee, so that your name will be glorified in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.